Hi, and welcome to Projects and Things. My name's Eve, And this is a 177-year-old Swedish kids' bed. So we recently bought this off of a lovely couple from Brussels, and we're going to sadly knock a lot of it apart. Uh, don't worry. I want to save almost every nice green-colored cool part of this thing but I'm going to turn it from a kid's bed into a poster bed? Right, box bed, that's what it's called. So we're going to turn this into an old-timey box bed. If you don't know what that is, uh, I'll show some pictures over here of what that looks like. And I don't know if you can see it really from there because it's pretty scratched up, but it says L. Sumdal 1843. So my son is getting too big for his kid's bed and we bought him a big one. But it's just a sad white Ikea thing. And with this thing, we're going to make the front of this box bed. And the first step is careful demolition. Okay, that was a lot of work. Um, but it went rather well thanks to this fancy uh, Japanese pull saw. Another fun thing that I learned from the interwebs. Um, I used to have this thing, my uh, plakhout saag, but it's only good for really, really short things. I think you have like two, three centimeters you can cut off. But in order to get under all these boards, I was able to do it with this. I had to cut this bottom plank off because it is completely joined through to the front and the front is painted nice and green and these sideboards the same way they were put in with all these dowels and stuff and i want to preserve as much of the front as possible so this front part is now off and now i'm going to start on the second part of the bed because yes there's a second part there's no space in this place there is no space in this place. Or at least not for this stuff. It's way too big. While I did make the horrible crime of cutting this bed apart, I'm gonna try and show all the nice parts of it that this person once made back in the day. Because most of the time a bed lives against the wall somewhere. So you only see one side. If you're lucky, you see two sides of these beds. Um, and I'm trying to deconstruct the bed and show all sides of it because I really like this. Like a lot of this just looks real pretty and most of it just sits against the wall for eternity. So here you can see the start of what I'm looking for. These are the two sides of the bed. One of them's flipped upside down. Now it's a term of moving the posts. So I used the combination of my table saw and the Japanese pull saw to cut these posts off. All the posts that I can use, I'm gonna stack on top of each other to add separation between the top and the bottom part. I would like the bottom part to be where a normal bed is and the top part to end sort of at two meters-ish. Now that the old bed is sort of opened up like a fish, 
Uh, it's time to make the rest of the frame. So I bought a ton of birch plywood and that's going to be the top shelf and all the other things. Um, the first step in this is to cut a whole lot of strips and then start doing some dry assembly up in the room. This first plate I'm going to cut lengthwise into 15 centimeter strips that are going to support the top platform. On each of these slats, I have to cut an angle, which is the angle of the roof in the room. So all seven of these are gonna get this cut out. And I think I'm just gonna use a jigsaw and box it out right here. <laughs> I forgot to take this plastic chisel off. I don't need that for this. Now it's gonna be the right size. Okay, for this next part, I hope I got a tiny bit smarter. My um, track saw track is way too short for a full piece of plywood. So I'm gonna use another piece from the same factory to use as a straight edge to guide my saw around. And I have to cut a few thin strips, five centimeters, uh, yeah, two five centimeter strips in order to become the upright against which my bed frame is going to rest. I just have to take the width of my saw, which is 16 and a half, plus five. 16 and a half plus five is 21 and a half. <sighs> Great success. And I think, <coughs> I think I need to build some dust collection in this uh, workshop. Yeah, I think one of my next projects is going to be dust collection. Hi, welcome to my sunroom. This is where all the things went up. So the seven slats that I cut out and are becoming the base for the platform. And the two thin strips are now here in the corner. I'll show you a close up in a second. It was a bit tricky to film all of this. Uh, I tried and while I was putting it up all by myself, I dropped my camera and I almost dropped one of these on my daughter's head. So I stopped filming. We did it with two people and now the thing is up. So the next step is here at the back of the bed. Here is going to come a cabinet that does two things. It supports the top platform on this side and it will also have some shelves on the inside to put nice things in. And the cool thing is I'm gonna make those shelves from the old bottom of the bed. And as you can see, it's really nice because the underside still has all the X marks from this being cut out and the top is all hand planed smooth. So they can just go right in as is, just gotta cut them down to size. So let's make a cabinet. So I broke down the next big sheet of plywood into three separate pieces. That'll be the back and the sides of this shelf. And I'm going to use my doweling jig to put some holes, mark them, where I can attach my cabinet with screws just to hold it in place, check all the measurements and then replace each screw with a dowel. I ended up attaching a few washers. Let me show a close up of this. Attaching a few washers to the underside, which makes actually an offset depth because this was initially made for 18 millimeters. And now with these little things in place, I can make dowels in the center of 15 millimeter um, um, boards. Here we go. All right, 
And so now I can uh, pre-assemble some pieces before taking them upstairs. I cut the two shelves to size and now I'm going to glue these on top and add one of the side panels for support, then take everything upstairs and fit it in its position. I just realized my workbench sags a tiny bit in the middle, which is causing a bit of sadness here. So I'm going to clamp these down here and my cross cut sled under this. We have a saying here in Belgium that says moeilijk gaat ook, which translates roughly to hard is also an option. And so we're going for hard is also an option in this case. And then it's resting on ah, what is essentially a flat surface. Yes, sir. Weight on top. What's, what's heavy? Ah, this is heavy. This is ridiculously heavy. All right. Ah, yes. Okay. This will push it down while the glue dries. Now my entire cabinet is flipped over and it's time to add some dowels to this party. And for that I'm going to need a drill and a dowel jig. A drill and a dowel jig. And voila, the main cabinet is in. Now I have to attach a side piece and the one missing plank that's up here before we can continue to the beautification of the front of this thing. So I just realized that working against gravity is a bad idea. So we're just gonna put glue here instead of trying to do it sideways on a board. And on the front side, I allowed myself to use some screws here and there, because on this end, there will be a full face frame against there when all is said and done with this bed. And voila, here on the back, we have the same solution. So dowels and then a blackout tie. And that's a pretty invisible way of finishing these type of uh, joints or connections. Now it is time for the face frame to come in because now there should be the right amount of space for this. Am I right? I am. <laughs> and not the final piece. There is more because this is too low. <laughs> Cool. So now the bed is put together. The face frame is um, square. It meets up with the top platform where it ought to. And now it's time to actually uh, install this. Ah, and this is the final big sheet of plywood. It's going to be the top of the platform. Um, I made a cardboard template inside. Uh, I'm gonna put it on here, trace it and cut it out. The reason I made a cardboard template is because nothing in the room is square. Walls are out of square, ceilings out of square, 
everything is out of square. So pushing pieces of cardboard into all the different corners and then trying to make straight lines match up is a good way to transfer an irregular shape like this to a regular shaped object. The last thing I want to do on this bed is cover some of this up because I have a plank going here, then one perpendicular, then one on the side, some holes, the bed, it looks a bit messy. So I want to cover this in one big sheet of Baltic birch. Um, the issue I have is that these bed posts don't run really straight. They kind of jump in and move out because it's old and bended and stuff. So I'm going to show you a trick how to do this. Wait, first let me show you close up. So the trick to drawing this thing is again a template that you make. In this case it's cardboard. So you put a piece of cardboard straight or it doesn't even have to be straight. You just put a piece of cardboard against there. You take a pencil pencil, and something to offset the pencil. In this case it's a toy for my kids. Uh, it just needs to offset the pencil wider than the gaps are in your little thing you want to draw. So in this case I take my pencil with the offset, I push everything, where's my whole board there? I push everything in place and then I run the width of the bed. And I keep my pencil pressed against the thing. Voila, and now after a ton of planing it is even and my lines are all. This line is straight and this line follows the curve of the bed. So now for some glue between here and a few screws when the glue is dried, drill some holes and put the dowels in. Same thing on the inside. Since this is a cupboard bed, the whole idea is that you can really close it off. Back in the day they did this with curtains simply to stay warm because all these houses weren't very heated. So the whole idea was you get in there with one, two, three people, you close the curtains and you sleep nice and warm. Um, we want to give the same amount of coziness to my son. So in order to do that we're going to install some curtains. Um, I'm going to install the rail and my wife's going to make the curtains. And voila, the bed is finished. This is where we're going to end this video. And in the next installment, I'm going to add functionality and safety to this thing. Meaning, I'm going to put a ladder up here all the way up to the platform and put safety rails in place so that my kids can't fall off said platform. But that's for part two. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like these things I do, then please consider subscribing. There should be a button to do so below. And also here and here are videos all about making stuff. So thank you, till next time, bye.